tier 2 play, uh, which basically involves um, just making a shot but not making a Hunter's Hall, um, following it up with sort of a delayed Ancient of Wind just for Fairy Fire um, to help with the hero focus, and then, and then supplementing all of this uh, with Mercenaries, which, which are great additions for, uh, for this uh, tier 2 playstyle. Mercenaries, uh, one thing to remember about Mercenaries is that they are um, somewhat cost-efficient. You know, you have to pay 200, uh, 235 or 245 gold for that Troll Berserker, and he's um, probably, uh, you know, sort of on par with um, uh, with a Rifleman, or maybe a little bit better for a little bit more money, I guess I would say. Um, and you have to pay... Uh, you have to pay... Uh, 195 or 185 or whatever it is for the uh, troll priest, and he's probably on par um, with you know maybe a little bit better than an actual priest, and so so you know relatively cost cost efficient in terms of these uh, um, low uh, sort of low level units, um, and uh, and so you don't want to be buying mercenaries um, if you have gold. Uh, sorry, you can be spending your gold on better units. You know, if you're if you're making bears and dryads, you probably don't need to be buying mercenaries. But if you're going with if you're going with archers and you have a lot of resources to spare, it makes sense to buy these. You know, pretty cost-effective units, um, and it allows you to not spend as much money on production buildings. Instead, you can just buy the mercenaries um, and supplement your army. So that's a little bit of mercenary theory for you. But of course, we have another exciting fight going on here. Um, one of the things you'll notice about that fight is that uh, when you're uh, when you're playing um, these uh, DH Archer versus DH Archer wars, um, especially when there are talents involved, um, hero focus is a big, big part of what's inevitably going to happen. Um, I mean, it may seem noobish to just focus each other's heroes, uh, but uh, but the fact of the matter is that even if you're microing optimally, um, hero focus is a lot of times the best thing to do. Um, so you should always bear that in mind when you're uh, trying to come out on top in these kind of a war. You'll notice that Moon um, bought a uh, invulnerability potion on his Demon Hunter um, when he was at the shop before, um, and those are almost always a good idea. Again, it's just another good way to spend gold, so some of the gold that you've saved by not building um, production production uh, buildings and teching. Um, so invulnerability potions are often a, uh, a good idea. Um, as are potions of healing, um, so it's just uh, important to spend uh, some of your extra gold there. So at this point, um, you know, due to Moon's sort of aggressive play and obviously good micro. Micro is a large part of this game. I'm not covering it specifically right now. I'm talking more about general things in this commentary. Um, but uh, you can check out the micro yourself, and maybe someday I'll do a micro commentary just to talk about particular little micro things. But in general, I sort of feel like that's beneath the level of a lot of our listeners. Uh, you all can look at a replay yourself and, you know, figure out how to micro. Um, but, uh... But, yeah, um, so, so more, uh more talk about the actual strategy of the game. So yeah, Moon um, has been, uh, you know, playing uh, playing this sort of like aggressive game and using his extra gold uh, effectively um, that he hasn't, you know, he's had extra gold by staying at 50 food um, and, uh, and he just backs it up by buying items on his heroes um, and, you know, creeping very aggressively whenever he has a second. Um, it's just... Uh, it's just a question of trying to keep in mind where your opponent is. You know, the, again, back to the theme of scouting, which I talk about so much. Um, you'll, if you'll notice, one of the things that he does pretty well in this game is almost any time shy um, is you know creeping or away from his base. Um, early on, um, Moon was w Moon was hitting shy, um, but then you know any time. Um, Shy was near his base and Moon couldn't hit him, um, Moon would creep something really quickly without running too far away from his base. Um, so with, you know, maybe one exception, he um, was able to not... Uh, he was able to stay near his base, not use CP scrolls, so but still end up with level and level and item advantage. Um, which is another way to, uh, to establish an advantage in Mirror, is just by creeping better than your opponent. Um, 
if you can creep when your opponent isn't creeping, obviously that's a good thing, um, and that's sort of the that's sort of what ends up happening here. Um, you know, Moon gets shy on the defensive, and then as soon as shy is on the defensive, he'll creep a camp real quick, um, and he'll uh, you know end up with end up establishing a little bit of a level advantage and being able to grab items and mercenaries while he's at it. So that's just uh, sort of something that can happen as you get into this sort of middle game. Um, and you'll notice if you look at the hero levels right now that Moon is significantly above due to his, uh, you know, more effective creeping. Um, he's crept quite a bit while all this has been going on. Um, you know, he's crept that, uh, most of that upper left mercenary camp, he's crept his, uh, his goblin merchant, um, and now he's creeping his, uh, his goblin laboratory, um, whereas, uh, Shy hasn't crept nearly so much. Uh, so that's just another little thing that helps you to build advantages when the situation reaches um, reaches this when you're uh, when you're dealing with this when you're dealing with this mirror match. Um, one thing to uh, one thing to bear in mind uh, is that Moon's particular playstyle here, in terms of staying at 50 food, you know, not expanding. Um, you know, sticking with basically the same unit, unit mixed um, is sort of based on the fact that Shy also went Demon Hunter Archers. Um, if Shy had gone, uh, Shy had gone to Bears, then Moon would obviously be playing a little bit differently. So this is just at this point, I'm talking about topics in trying to keep your, um, and sorry, try to establish an advantage when the game is just entirely mirror and you start off with this Demon Hunter aggressive play. Um, so you'll notice in this fight that his hero levels were a large part of what prevailed. Shy spent a lot of time focusing the Demon Hunter, which was very strong um, due to Moon's items and due to his hero levels. Um, and during all that time, Moon was able to take out most of Shy's units. Um, and then when Moon eventually saved his Demon Hunter um, and got it running away, uh, Shy lost his Demon Hunter in the process, and that was what tipped the scale. And if you look at the hero scores at the end of this game and the unit skilled, you can see that Moon just did a lot more creeping. Um, and so... The basic, uh, the basic outline of this game is that Moon played very aggressive early on, was able to kill some Wisps and get a Moon Juice advantage. Um, he, you know, followed that up with a, uh, with a strong fight at Tier 2, um, in which he was able to, uh, to maintain his advantage um, by using his, by, you know, staffing his heroes home and making good use of that Moon Juice that he'd saved. Um, and then at that point, he didn't have enough of an advantage to win the game, um, but he continued to establish more of an advantage um, by keeping Shy on the defensive and then using every spare second to do do some very you know aggressive creeping. Um, and with the creeping, he was able to establish uh, a little bit of a gold advantage and a little bit of a hero level advantage and a little bit of an item advantage, um, and that is what eventually tipped the scale. Um, and so this is just a, you know a scenario for for like I said, playing aggressively with Demon Hunter Archer when your opponent um, does the same to try to counter you. So hopefully my commentary was a little bit all over the place. I talked about a lot of different things in those 15 minutes, um, but hopefully you uh, got some information out of that. And now I'm going to switch over to another game like I said, double header, right? Um, which is another Moon game, but this time it's Moon vs. Creo from the same uh, BlizzCon event, and they're playing on Terranistan, and this time we're going to talk about more Demon Hunter Archer aggressive play, um, except uh, with some more Terranistan specific topics, and, uh, and this time we're going to be talking about playing it against somebody who tries to go bears. But still uh, winning with just the Demon Hunter Archer mix in mirror. So this time I want you to get this replay pause. Again, this is 4K Creo versus MYM Moon. 4K Creolophus, I should say, for those of you who don't know the common abbreviation. Um, and this is 4K, so 4K Creolophus versus uh, MYM Moon um, on uh, Terranus Sands. We're watching this from Creolophus's perspective, from Creo's perspective, uh, and pausing it, same place, 15 seconds, watching at one time speed, Fog of War off, go ahead and get synced up. Well, I get a drink of water, <laughs> and uh, now we can get ready to unpause. So, unpausing in three, two, one, go. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So, hopefully, you guys are uh, getting excited about this uh, de whole Demon Hunter Archer um, with you know maybe maybe a little bit of talents mixed in. Um, sort of uh, play style in, in Mirror. 
this uh, you know aggressive play that can result in these uh, quick wins or the establishing of an advantage that will carry you through. We all know what it's like to go priestess.